And the thing is, I can't join uh, the Ubuntu on a channel. No? Yeah, it's showing us uh, invite only. Did you try? Uh, did you try yeah, the Ubuntu, on. Ubuntu dash on dash yeah. air? Yeah, I don't just now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So um, the this page still says we have zero viewers. Let's see if this is going to improve in the next minute or two, and then we can can start off. We seem to have a bunch of people on the IRC channel already. Yeah. There's a bit delay to the video, too, also. Yeah, there's always a delay. That's right. But we seem to have two viewers already. Maybe it's time to to start. So, hello, Bhavani. Uh, good to have yeah, you here again. Yeah, thank you. So, how are you doing? I'm all fine. How are you? Good, good, good. We have a we have a lot of sun today. Uh, which is very nice. Okay. So, so everyone who who joined into the video stream, we please also make sure that you um, join the Ubuntu on Air uh, chat channel. If you're on ubuntuonair.com, there's a small um, chat widget below. We just enter your name and and get connected. This way, you can also. Um, Ask questions and uh, we'll have a bit of a conversation. It's going to be a bit more interesting. Also, if you have a regular um, IRC client already, just point it towards uh, Ubuntu dash on dash air on uh, Freenode, which is, should basically be the same thing. All right, so we uh, seem to have. One person in the IRC channel already. Uh, wherever ball ball is, uh, seems to be three in the morning. That's some some dedication there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Um, if if you have questions, hello, Madi. Madi just waved. Uh, watching the video. If you have questions, please keep them coming in. Give us a quick introduction of who you are, where you're from, what you're interested in, because uh, we want to talk about the stuff that interests you. Bhavani, do, do you have anything you want to talk to talk about today? Mm. I guess. Just the uh, introduction into the SRE process. Since one of them asked for uh, how to do SRE. Ah, yes, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, maybe we should give a quick introduction into what SRU means and uh, how it works. Do you want to start? Mm, yeah. Basically, what an SRE means is we will release a bit. We update, uh, for example, a package in, in the current development release fixes some bug, which is also affecting the stable release. Mm -hmm. We take out the part of the uh, uh, package which fixes the bug or the or analysis in feature there and port it to the stable release yeah. through the updates uh, repository. So that is called as stable release update. Yes, and that's a very important point. Um, we always want to fix just um, super important and and uh, super grave issues in stable release updates because um, it's easier to review and easier to test and 
regressions are bad. If you have people relying on stable software, um, a regression might be uh, might cost them hours of work to to recover again. It's not like uh, developers like like us who can maybe sometimes easily recover, but for them it's it's going to be uh, it's very tough. Let me just have a quick look at the um, documentation we have to see how a stable release update is defined there. Uh, you can find this information on wiki ubuntu com slash stable release updates. And yes, it says uh, stable release updates will in general only be issued in order to fix high impact bugs. Examples of such bugs include um, security vulnerabilities, for example, severe regressions, loss of user data, and um, critical infrastructure things, um, and so on. So uh, this is what, what usually um, makes makes a, a stable release update. And package I'm maintaining the world broadband order info as a desario uh, what is that exception I can upload it anytime but it doesn't call it to this bucket. Um, which exception? Uh, it has an exception, desario exception. Oh yes, yes, yes that's yeah. right. Yeah. There's a few packages that have um, SAU exceptions um, for example time zone data or um, uh, data about uh, like mobile carriers and and things like that. So there's a few exceptions. That's that's right. So how do we go about uh, fixing uh, a problem in a stable release? First of all, we need to make sure that we fix it in the current development release. Um, this this can give us some reassurance that uh, the the fix we're going to use for the uh, stable release is also going to work for the um, for the stable release so it, it, it works for for both that's the first step and in when you when you have a bug report about um, a problem in, in a stable release you want to be really 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 um, elaborate you want to explain what the problem is uh, how many people it affects um, a good test case um, and then a minimal fix. Don't try to fix everything, every single problem you ran into, just fix the one critical bit and um, because it's, it's much more likely to, 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 to be approved. Um, if you decide that or if you find out that your the issue or if, if you want also a new feature, not just a bug fix but also a new feature, you might want to have a look at the um, process for for backports. That is the the bar for getting something into Ubuntu backports is much 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 lower. Okay, we have uh, JR joining the channel, and um, I would love to hear some some questions. If you're interested in Ubuntu development, how it works, if you want examples, if you want to know something more general, how it all works, how the teams work together, um, just ask. Unfortunately, I don't have a good example for uh, an SAU case right now. Uh, would have helped. Let me see if um, I can take my package and just for inserting if you want. Yeah, do you have a, a, a package already? Yeah, my package mobile broadband thing which has an inserting exception always. Yeah. Um, do you want to demo how to prepare and upload for it or yeah, but uh, the process is entirely different there. Okay, because you sync from Debian? Yeah, we just sync from Debian and uh, I just take the Debian package and uh, test it out on uh, a stable release of Ubuntu and uh, 
allocate to the users to test. Okay. They feel that the feature fixes the bug. Uh, some uh, announcement they want. Uh, we push it through the updates repository. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes makes sense. Um, let me see if I can find a quick example. Daniel, I have a question here. So, no. Sorry, what's that? Yeah, I have a question here. Yeah. Being uh, yeah, a update release to the stable repositories, mm -hmm. will they have some exceptions or freeze exceptions? Or will freeze exceptions uh, affect the SRF process, etc.? Um, freeze exceptions. Um, yeah, uh, I I just found a quick example. Shall we talk about uh, freezes after the example? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do that. So I just uh, went through a bunch of bug reports and found one. Let me show it to you. Okay, let me just make the font a little bit bigger. So, um, so we have this this bug report here, and as you can see, it's um, it was tracked in Debian. Here we have dev bugs, some bug number, and it says it's fixed release there already. And we established that it's a problem in Precise and Quandrel, and Chris has been working on this. So, if you have a look at the bug report, um, so it's very clear cut. You have um, the impact described up here, um, regression potential. That's also something you need to establish when you're uh, working on, on such a bug report. Sometimes it's easy to think, okay, I just do this one line change over here and it's going to be fine. Uh, in the end, you find out that this one line change is going to break some some other functionality, so it's it's good to to assess the, the regression potential. Um, Chris explains which version is affected, and here we have steps to reproduce the problem. Okay, so Benny, just a just a moment here. In the case of an exception in a package. Yeah. Uh, we just code the exception there and uh, we just ask for an upload. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. In, in in cases of exceptions it's 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 easier. You don't need to go through a lot of this uh procedure, but in, in this case um you would have to fill out all the um all the bits and pieces in the bug report. So um here we have let me see, this is for Quantal, this is for Precise. So, as you can see, in the bug report we have two bug tasks, one for Precise, the other one for, for Quantal, and Chris attached two um, patches for, for the issue, one for Precise, the other one for Quantal, and this is supposed to be the one for and I can see um, because this is a fix which hasn't gone into Ubuntu yet. This is still in the in the review queue. Um, this shouldn't be precise because precise is already uh, closed and it's released. So this should go to precise dash proposed instead. I'm going to leave a comment on on the bug report in a bit. And what you can see is we have the change log entry here. Um, closes bug with this number. And then we have this this patch, which or origin originates from um, from an upstream commit, and 
this is really done well because we have some uh, explanation here what what the patch is all about and how it all works. And this is the the second fix which is supposed to go into Quantrill. Um, he should be Quantrill. That's a, a small mistake, but it's easy to fix. Um, so that's basically how you, you can fix uh, bugs in the stable release. You direct one patch towards Quantrill, or you can use a merge proposal as well if you prefer merge proposals, and one towards a uh, precise proposed. All right. So I'll just. Just a note here. Just a note here. You always uh, upload to the proposed repository first and then test it out. But, uh, then you just test it out by a team called Ubuntu Stable Release. Uh, what is it? Uh, testing team. Yeah. Um, yeah and then it uh, gets uploaded to update repository. From yes. there you can download. Yeah. Yes, that's all um, on, on this wiki page. Uh, it explains uh, who to subscribe to the bug report and, and how the uh, procedures with, with the testing and the verification and how that all works. It's all part of this um, of this wiki page. So let me just leave a quick comment here. Can you please uh, update the changelog entries of both patches to go to precise proposed and on. Okay. So we just reviewed a patch in the sponsoring queue, which is good as well. Oh great, we have we have some questions now. A uh, ball ask asks is Ubuntu coding mostly done in C? Uh, first of all, a lot of the, the software which is in Ubuntu is not um, is not written by Ubuntu developers. A lot of them um, collaborate and work with with other projects. Um, so the code originates in most of the cases somewhere else. We work with these upstream projects and with Debian to integrate everything as as, as good as we can. And yes, a lot of um, a lot of the code we use in Ubuntu is is written in C, especially if it's something um, infrastructure code like like uh, things that relate to to hardware or graphics. And we you will find that that is mostly written in in C. But there's also a lot of code written in in, in C plus plus, in Perl, in Python. Um, yeah, Ubuntu seems to have this affinity to mm. to to Python, which um, I think makes a lot of sense because it's just a joy to use. <laughs> I okay. I love using Python. Yeah, quickly. Okay. Yes. So, um, but if you feel like you don't know enough programming languages and and uh, so you're a bit unsure about that, um, don't be because you're going to to learn a lot of things uh, very, very quickly just by taking one step at a time. Um, I think most of the people who started uh, working on Ubuntu, they didn't know all the uh, programming languages which are in use. All right. Um, and then we have JR who asked, is it possible to add in next Ubuntu release the feature that can easily convert it from Unity to classic without installing themes. Um, I'm not quite sure if I understand the the question correctly, but um, it should actually be possible to uh, just install what's the package again, GNOME session fallback or something like that, and you will get um, classic GNOME. You will have that installed. Um, that's as far as I know the, the easiest way to, to get it installed, but uh, if you want to ask the, the people in the Ubuntu desktop channel, uh, they, they should, should be able to, to let you know. That's great, finally some, some questions in here. Mm. Uh, keep them coming. So we wanted to talk about freezes, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, 
Uh, will a feature freeze effect SRE process? Yes, so uh, let's have a quick look at our uh, release schedule. We just load it up. Share my screen. Because it's it's fairly important to to know how how to deal with, with the different stages of the of the release cycle. Okay, make the font a bit bigger again. So this is the the release schedule of Quantal Quetzal, which is going to be released on the eighteenth of, of October, which is roughly four months from now. So we started off May. Um, the toolchain got uploaded, so the, uh, the, the the most basic tools to to build packages, all all that kind of stuff went in first. We had um, the Ubuntu Developer Summit where we um, discussed all the features we wanted to see in Ubuntu. A few weeks later, we expect all the uh, specifications and blueprints to be written, so we know which features are are, are going to go in. Also, during the time, we look at all the individual upstream projects, and our biggest upstream project is, is Debian. So we have a look at what's been happening since our last release. Like Towards the release, I'm going to talk about it in a bit more detail in a bit. Um, you just start focusing on bug fixes. New crazy features, you don't want them. There's no time to, to test everything perfectly, so... Um, towards the end of the release just bug fixes so there, there is always going to, when when a new release is open there's always going to be some uh, yeah some some differences some delta between what what has happened upstream and what happened in ubuntu so it's a good time to merge these changes and make sure that um, our changes but also upstream changes are represented in ubuntu so that's a very hectic time but it's also very exciting because you get lots of um, new updates and, and, and new features uh, it's quite quite an interesting time short time later we released alpha 1 and alpha 2 which is always good to um, solidify what's been happening in the archive and also get a bit of of testing then at some stage we have Debian import freeze and that's one of the first free states where uh, we start to slow down a little bit. Um, Debian import freeze means that uh, packages which um, which have not been uh, changed in Ubuntu they're going to get synced from Debian so um, the source in Ubuntu is replaced with the one from, from Debian and it's automatically built. So um, we actually benefit whenever our source packages are unmodified, if we don't have any changes at all, because we get the new, uh, um, the new update for free in the first few weeks of our, of our release cycle. After that, those, are out, those are automatically seen. And yes. with DB import freeze, uh, the automatic scene stops. Yes, exactly. So, um, as I said, we're, we're slowing down to, um, from Debian import freeze on, and from there on you can still sync packages from Debian, but it's it's always going to be a a, a manual thing. You're going you're going to have to make the conscious decision to say, okay, we need this version, so we're going to sync it manually. Um, Afterwards, we release Alpha 3, and the the next big change is a feature freeze, where we mostly expect features to be there already, not in a perfect shape, but um, the development work after feature freeze is almost exclusively about um, about fixing bugs and. For, for package maintainers and, and developers, it also means that um, big new changes, so if you want to import um, a big new update from, uh, from, from some package, you will need to get a freeze exception if it includes uh, lots of new features and 
um, if it's just bug fixes, we we can still we can still get them in, and the process for that is quite uh, lightweight. It's um, it's explained over here at Wiki Ubuntu Common Freeze Exception Process. Basically, you um, you find a bug report and uh, subscribe the release team to it, and you explain why do we need this this change in Ubuntu? Why do you need this exception? And also uh, provide some some background on, on what exactly changed upstream and and how big the changes are so to give the release team a bit more um, more of an idea what's how big the the impact is going to be. And after feature freeze, we have lots of other different uh, freeze dates. We have uh, UI freeze, beta one freeze, beta two freeze, documentation string freeze. This one is also uh, quite important because if you have um, text in in, uh, in in very common packages, in very visible packages, and the text changes, um, all the translators of Ubuntu will have to go back and and uh, update their translations again. So that's uh, quite a bit of work. So that's why we prefer at some stage. Um, at some stage to uh, freeze the, the documentation strings. And afterwards the kernel is frozen, desktop in infrastructure and so on and so forth. Um, towards the end it's just building images, testing, testing, testing and whatever show blockers there are, um, this is what is, is going to be fixed. The rest is, is going to go into Ubuntu through um, stable release updates, SRUs, which is something we, we talked about earlier. And that's the Ubuntu release cycle. As you can see, um, it very much defines what you're going to work on as an Ubuntu developer. In the beginning, it's going to be mostly uh, mergers, version updates to get new uh, new content, new, new uh, features into Ubuntu, and afterwards it's almost exclusively uh, bug fixes. And if you have a look at the uh, at the release cycle, there's still a few there's still some time for us to to uh, to fix bugs in, in Ubuntu. So now's a good time to get involved and, and fix some of those bugs. Anything I, I missed, Bavani? Nothing. It's perfect. Yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me so, see. Uh, yeah. My, my question, our question was, will SRE process uh, be affected by freezes in the present cycle? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get it. Sorry, I was just looking yeah. at at IC. Okay. The thing is, like uh, the present releases quantum, and we want to do an SRE for precise. Yeah. Will quantum uh, free cycles affect? SRUs for precise, or is SRU always open? Um, ah, yeah, good question, good question. Um, no, as far as I know, the um, SRU pocket should always be open. So um, even if if the current development release is is frozen, you can still get uh, fixes into into stable releases. Of course, sometimes you're going to um, have to get the uh, the bug fixed in the development release first, but uh, for that we we have um, also the the Quantel proposed package which helps working around the the freeze limitations a bit. But that's also explained on the um, on the SIU page. Okay. So they ask a question like, uh, when I uninstalled an application from Ubuntu, does it affect other application? I think, I guess it's yes. It yes. affects the uh, packages which depend on the package you are installing, uh, which you are uninstalling. For example, if you uninstall Unity, everything goes. Yes. Along with Unity. Yes. Yeah. So. Um... When you uninstall packages, it's it's always um, it's always useful to 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 check the list of other packages which are going to be removed along with it. But if it's just the application itself which gets removed, you should be you should be fine. 
Yeah, and, and Ball already answered the question as well. Okay. So was it in the room? Uh, do what? What is the time then? The time is at ten thirty over here. Okay, okay. It's uh, two in the noon here. Yeah. So is it? Uh, is it? Did you get lunch already? Yeah, I had lunch. Perfect. Perfect. So, more questions. Keep them. Keep them coming through the through the ISC channel. I'm just wondering if we should um, just demo a, a quick bug fix or maybe um, review a bug fix just to just to give others an idea of of, um, of how development works. So JR asks, uh, thanks for the question. What if I want to retain the application affected by the application I'm removing? What can I do? Um, there's, I think this is a bit of a hypothetical quick case, but if you have uh, package B depending on on package A and you remove package A, uh, package B is always going to go. If you have um, core functionality provided by some other package um, and that gets removed, uh, there's there's no way for for you to keep it. Um, of course, if you have um, there's there's different categories of dependencies. Uh, we have depend depends, we have recommends and suggests. So the way this works is depends always get installed. There's no way around them. And if you, um, as I said, if if you uh, remove one of the package one of the uh, dependencies, the other package is going to be removed as well. Uh, for recommends, they also get installed by default, but you can safely um, remove them or tell app to not install them in the first place. And suggests are basically just um, just there so so the package manager can can um, can inform you of like another package which would be useful in, in, in those in those circumstances. But uh, that's basically the options you have. Um, they are there might be crude ways to work around the packaging uh, package management system, but I wouldn't advise to do that. Um, dependencies are usually there for good, for good reason. So if, if there's no more questions or suggestions of, of what we should look into, um, I could we could maybe review um, review a, a package or two. Just to um, to see what what people people did there, and uh, maybe that's also going to explain what you can do and how a review works. So I'll just quickly show you. Okay, so. We have this page, and this is the um, sponsoring overview. This is a list of all the uh, patches and merge proposals for Ubuntu which need to get reviewed. So um, let's let's just have a quick look at at this one. Um, we have a contribution from some of Buname. I hope I uh, pronounced the name correctly. And he says, could you please merge my branch, this one, into this, uh, sorry, into this one. And uh, we can see a quick diff of, of, of what he did. So um, as we can see, we have a package um, where a home, home page information was was added. Um, first of all, we can have a quick look if this home page actually exists. It does. We can have a quick look if 
the this package also exists in in Debian. Debian. It's called z3c.macro. And if you go to packages, debian.org source, and then the package name, um, the page is going to show you if it exists for Debian as well. As we can see, the package does not exist, so it's it should be safe for us to get it into Ubuntu, uh, have a look if it still builds, and then we can uh, then we can maybe upload it. So we get the um, branch names again, and this is quite quite trivial actually. Let me sorry, I need to find out how I can share the other screen. Okay, here we go. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to branch the official Ubuntu branch for Z3C macro. Um, this is always the same syntax we use. Maybe I can make the font a little bit bigger, easier to read. Then we cd into the uh, into the directory, and now merge the other branch with our merge and here we are. We can just have a look at the at the diff to see what exactly changed and is precisely what we saw on the um, on the merge proposal page. So here we have uh, name, email address, description of the change and the home page field added down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build a, a source package from the um, source package branch and that's um, some, something I, I explained uh, in one of the last hangouts already. We started off with just this directory with a revision for every uh, single change that went into Ubuntu and from this we now generated uh, the source package, which are these files, and that's also the files we need uh, for to to build this and to to upload it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give it a test build, and that should be quick. I hope. Um, I explained this also in in the last hangout. Um, this is pbuilder, which basically uses uh, pre-generated minimal Ubuntu environment, environment um, to 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 start the build in this minimal environment. Um, it just installs all the packages which are necessary to to build the package, performs the build, and this is done so we can ensure that. Um, the package built in an unmodified environment. It's going to build everywhere. And um, the build is done already. So that was pretty quick. Um, another thing we can do now is let me have a quick look what the sorry uh, package is called. So this is the source package name and this is the binary package name. So we can just um, download the old binary package. As you can see, we're at 1.4.2 Ubuntu 1. And the new package we just created uh, has the O Ubuntu 2 with a bug fix. Um, now we're going to use a really nice tool called Deptiv, which you can use on source packages, but you can also use it on um, binary packages. And we're just going to compare the old .deb file, the old binary package, with the new one and see what uh, the differences are. And it's, it's, uh, it's easy to see. The only thing was the uh, changed homepage field. So um, if we upload this to Ubuntu now, in future versions, um, or once it gets built, Software Center will let us know, okay, here's the home page for, for the package you're going to install. And that gives the gives the user a much better experience. 
So um, I'm going to upload this now. The the change looks 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 fine to me. That was uh, quick, and we're also going to leave a comment on the merge proposal page just to thank uh, Usama for his for his work on this. Yes, here we are. And we're going to hit approve, and and that's it. So, if you st start out with with Ubuntu development, this is what you're going to go through. You're going to have somebody who's going to review your um, your, your your changes and who's, who's going to give you some feedback, some guidance on, on how to improve. And um, yeah, it's a fun experience. I. I went through the same. I had to admit I made many mistakes in the, in the beginning, but it was it was a good learning experience, and I got to know uh, lots of people. I made no, I made more mistakes than you. Going to. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure who, who made more of us. I think if we both have a really quiet and rainy day, we can try to find out who did m more mistakes. <laughs> no, <they're> sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's let's see if we have any more questions. Um, let me see. Is it necessary to separate the packages used by an application with the packages used by the other applications? Yeah, but it's an interesting question. Um, usually, we try to. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, usually, we try to not duplicate code in the archive. So if there's one library which provides the functionality for, for multiple applications, um, we just want it once in the archive. And the reason for that is it's much less maintenance um, overhead. You just have to worry about this one package as opposed to multiple ones. And for example, if you have um, security issues, um, you have to, to fix them just in one place and not in, in, in multiple places. So it's it's perfectly fine if you have app A and app B and they both uh, depend on lib C or some Python module called, called something. We try to have as little duplication in the archive as um, as possible. That's one of the most important things to look out for when packaging. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have um, libraries which um, where where a new new version introduced changes which weren't uh, backwards compatible, and that's always interesting because sometimes you have a lot of applications who depend on this library, and you have to make sure that you transition them them all over. And that sometimes can take quite a long time because it has substantial code changes, but it is um, it is necessary work, and it's it's always a good idea to um, just consolidate on 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 one version. Um, I'll be just gone for a second. I need to blow my nose. I'll be right back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, can you uh, do I have to clean the packages before test build another product build? I'm afraid not. Pre builder cleans itself and then builds the new package. It just creates the new, uh, it just creates a package and it builds and it cleans the build and once again when you build a new package, it builds it freshly. With the packages leaking in the archive. Yeah, but uh, what you what sometimes it's useful, especially if you have um, a build failing. You have um, a number of options to to preserve uh, the the state of the of the build or to log. It's called log in. Let me the logs. Yeah. yeah, you I can either, either, 
yeah, you can either use the logs, you can uh, preserve the, the the status of the of the build before it failed, or you can log into the people that is to see what failed there. So that's a a, a super useful tool in, in figuring out what the what the problem was. If, if there are no, no more requests for um, for demos or questions, you can either do um, you can review. Oh yeah, let's let's review another another bug report, another um, patch which came in. So let me just see if somebody replied to this already. No, nobody. So this is um, a sync request. Um, Ahmed asked for a um, new new version from uh, from Debian to be imported, and uh, as we can see, it fixed um, a bug in in, in Debian, and um, this should this doesn't look like a, a huge addition of, of features, but uh, it looks like it's going to to solve problems which we which you have in Ubuntu as well. So we'll just have a quick look. T was the package and see um, see what's happening there. So yeah, here we go. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to get the old source code of T and then we'll also get the um, source code from, from Debian Unstable. It's going to take a small while. <clears throat> right, 7 megabytes. And uh, yeah, what we're going to do first is we're going to kick off a build of the um, of the of the Debian version just to see if it all works and the source is seven megabytes so it might take a while to um, to build the package but we're just going to find out. Good thing already is the version we, we get from the uh, Ubuntu archive is um, 1.3-18 which indicates that it's um, uh, a, a version we take, took from, from Debian without any modifications. So that's good for us because we don't have to worry about changes we had in Ubuntu and they didn't, they weren't forwarded to, to Debian so we might need to merge them manually. We can just test, does this update make sense? We can have a quick look at it and um, we can see if it builds and then make a decision. So, same as as earlier, we're going to um, kick off a, a Quantle build for, for for this package, and in the meantime, we're going to um, depth diff the two uh, source packets, the one from Ubuntu and the one from from Debian. Um, earlier, we compared the um, binary packages, so, so the deb packages. In this case, we're going to review the diff between source packages, so, so difference in the in the source code between those two two revisions. So, <coughs> sorry. Again, we have the change log entry which says don't ship encoding still directory since it will make deb helper generate the problematic update from still. Encoding call that removes um, this directory. Okay, so what happens here is that's right, we don't ship this directory anymore. And it's also uh, removed from Debian rules. So this call 
uh, install directories, it's it's removed from from here. So that looks fine just for now. Um, yeah, now we have the interesting problem that um, that the build is going to take a bit longer, especially since we have to get some build dependencies uh, first. It's nearly 60 megabytes. The great thing about pBuilder, I mentioned it yesterday as well, oh, uh, two days ago, is that it caches um, build dependencies. So even if you sit there and, and wait, um, it's, it's, it's going to be fine because you don't have to, to read down on, down on them again. So, as I said, this is going to take a while. Um, are there more questions from from the audience, from the IRC channel? Anything that interests you? We have 10 minutes left this session. Yeah, notice this. This seems to be... Um, a bad time for some for some people in the uh, in the in the US and, and elsewhere, uh, but it's the best I can do. One early in my morning and one in, in my afternoon, my evening. So maybe we need to find some presenters, some hosts in uh, in the US who can. Come and ask the question like, can you see this package from Debian this late? We can sync the package, but depending upon the features it introduces into the Ubuntu world. For example, new features are not uh, not going to be introduced as of now since we have feature freeze. And since this is a fix that which uh, removes the encoding thing, it's fine from our side because it doesn't make any sort of Massive changes to code, or massive changes to the working of the program. Yeah, it's exactly. It doesn't introduce any any new um, any new features. So um, this is just a bug fix release, and uh, we we can get it into into Ubuntu as well. So uh, we can do this the same. So we were lucky. It just took a, a while to get the uh, build dependencies, and afterwards it was quite quick to build. So uh, again, we can get the um, the old binary package, so the dash 18 version, and um, and then we can just compare what what, what changed in, in, in the packages. Let's do it like this. And that's that's a check I I always make. Sometimes you have huge changes which uh, sometimes went unnoticed. Some files were missing and and stuff like that. And in in this case, it sh it could be interesting because we have um, a directory which doesn't get shipped anymore. So let's see. We have Tipa. It was three packages. It was Tipa, Tipa doc, and Xfonts Tipa. And we we'll just uh, sorry. This step. So in the tipa package, uh, there's this not not uh, not any interesting changes in there. Um, the, the maintainer change just ignore it for now. It's um, it has relevance, but not not now. <laughs> okay, so this is also um, a change which is less relevant right now. So what we what happened here was that on the build server in um, in Launchpad um, the changelog was uh, replaced by a symlink and we ha have the actual changelog so that's it's not a huge change, it's it's no big deal. Uh, tipa doc compare this one as well. Only thing is install sizes I'm not of lower side because the directory doesn't chip anymore. Uh, so, sorry, what's that? Install sizes with less 
because they directly doesn't ship anymore. Yeah. So it was 84. So as we can see, um, not a lot, not a lot changed in there. And to uh, approve this sync request, I would just call sync package. What is it again? Uh, minus s and s is for because I'm sponsoring a person and and that's uh, we have a bug number um, minus our quantum yeah I think I need to specify where I think it from D and stable and then the uh, source page name which is T part. but this is something that shouldn't really <coughs> shouldn't really concern you because it's something uh, people with with upload rights use so um, yeah as you can see here we, we get uh, some some confirmation again um, we see um, this version is going to be replaced, but by this one we get um, uh, some 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 explanation of, of of what happened again, and then we can say yes, we want to 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 sync this package. Okay, and now we have to wait until the um, sync was successful. I will get an email about it, and then uh, I can get this bug automatically closed. So, we just uh, reviewed three bugs from the sponsoring queue, which is which is always a good thing to do. Um, so far, did this did this make sense to to everyone in the in the audience? Um, was anything too complicated or weird or too quick? What is the best Ubuntu version? I can just use this aspect of That's, oh, yeah, that's a question I don't have a good answer for. Uh, JR asked, what is the best Ubuntu version that I can use with my netbook SPY 1D 270? Um, one thing you can have a look at is. Um, is the friendly? Yeah, you can have a look at friendly.ubuntu.com and uh, review the list of of um, of uh, laptop models or, or um, hardware models in there, uh, just to see if if it was reported as as working perfectly. But if you want to be absolutely sure, you can. Um, install Ubuntu just on a, on a USB stick, uh, boot from the USB stick and um, you can check if all, all your hardware all works before you go and install it. Uh, that's probably the best the best recommendation I, I have here. Um, yeah one thing I, I always talk about when we when we finish um, Finish the hangout. Uh, go have a look at the at the packaging guide. It's uh, you can find it at developer.ubuntu.com/packaging, and um, I think it should provide you with a really good start into into um, into Ubuntu development. And um, then, if you do Facebook or uh, Google Plus or Twitter or Identica. We have uh, the Ubuntu Dev handle. If you follow that account, you're going to get updates about the next events we have, the next Hangouts, and whatever else is happening. So uh, you might want to to stay up to date. Bhavani, it's been a pleasure, as 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 last time and the and the one before. It was good to have you, and thanks everyone yeah, for the question. Yes. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be, be there along with you to the hangout. Yes, it was lots, lots, of, lots of fun. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish you, wish you all a great day, and I'm going to see you all next week again. Thanks. Bye. And bye. Take care. Bye. bye. Yeah, take care. Bye. See you.